Welcome to this short series of films on unmanned aircraft and the law. They're aimed at operators and manufacturers, and as a technology lawyer, I'm interested in unmanned aircraft systems because of the way law touches them in so many ways. An operator will have to consider the rules and regulations of flying in national and international airspace, as well as privacy and data protection matters, and also liability issues, especially when flying around people and property. A manufacturer will have to consider the myriad of contractual, tortious and regulatory issues during the life cycle of one of their products, from prototype and development all the way through to disposal. And on top of this, quite often, unmanned aircraft systems are developed in collaboration, perhaps as a prime and subcontractual arrangement. And in these situations, there's often a myriad of contracts that surround them. What I'm going to focus on in this first short film is intellectual property issues that arise when I'm dealing with uh, commercial contracts in this sector. Intellectual property is an umbrella term used to describe the rights that attach to ideas and expressions of ideas. And they form naturally into those rights which can be registered and those which are unregistered. Registered rights include patents, registered trademarks and registered designs, whereas unregistered marks include copyrights, unregistered trademarks and unregistered designs. It's important for UAS businesses to understand IP because it can allow them to exploit their creations, to protect their creations and also to ensure that they don't infringe a third parties. When I'm negotiating commercial contracts in the UAS sector, the two forms of intellectual property that I constantly come up with up against are patents and copyright. As I said before, patents are registrable. An inventor will have to show in his application to the National Patent Office that a patent is new or novel, it has an inventive step, it's capable of industrial process, and it doesn't fall within the ex one of the exceptions of the Patents Act. And these exceptions include computer programs, which is why unmanned aircraft systems companies often rely hand in glove on copyright, which is used in the UK to protect software and the underlying source code. Going back to patents, once an application is approved, this can allow the inventor a monopoly on that right for 20 years. And this can be very valuable for a company. It can also be a valuable asset which can be traded. So let's look now at contracts and how intellectual property plays into the, their negotiation. A contract is when two parties have the intention to create legal relations. There's an offer, acceptance and consideration flows between the parties. Contracts don't need to be written down under English law, but quite often in unmanned aircraft systems and engineering type contracts, these are heavily negotiated and run to many pages. And one of the key issues I'm constantly negotiating is that around intellectual property. Two terms you're likely to hear in the intellectual property clause are background IP and foreground IP. Background IP relates to the intellectual property that the parties have developed separately before entering into this agreement. Quite often, the parties agree that the background intellectual property will stay with those parties going forward. Foreground IP, on the other hand, deals with intellectual property that's created during the collaboration and the agreement, and it's often hotly contended as to whom should own these rights going forward. It's sometimes suggested that these rights should be jointly owned, because often, in a heated negotiation, this is an easy solution. However, in the long run, it's never advisable. This is because in order to either assign or license jointly owned intellectual property, you always need the consent of the other party under English law. This isn't the same in some other jurisdictions such as the US. If, a, if joint IP is the only solution, 
then the parties need to set out in some detail how they're going to deal and operate with the joint IP going forward. The other area that people or parties are always concerned about with background IP is to is to as to whether it infringes a third party's intellectual property. This can be a very expensive claim if it's ever brought and therefore to cover it off parties will usually insist on a warranty that the intellectual property of the other party doesn't infringe a third party's and also back this off with an indemnity whereby the indemnifying party promises to pay the the debt of an indemnified party should they incur a loss because of a third party claim. And finally, the other area that's often heavily negotiated within a contract concerning IP is how that IP is going to be monetized. There's two main, main ways to do this. The first would be to sell the IP outright by way of assignment. And the second most common area will be when one party who's created the IP retains the ownership and then they'll license that on a royalty basis to another party. And there's lots of different things to consider when we're talking about royalties, such as minimum royalty payments, exclusive and non-exclusive arrangements. And that's the end of this first short film on unmanned aircraft and the law. I hope you found it useful. If you'd like to discuss anything further, please don't hesitate to get in touch with me.